everyone my name is Evie Lupine welcome back to my channel and today I have another video for you all today we are gonna be talking about topping from the bottom now if you have been on my channel for a while you likely already know that there are a few refrains within the kink community that I don't necessarily love Things like submissives really have all the power or BDSM is inherently sexual. And out of all of those phrases, my least favorite is probably topping from the bottom. And there's a good reason for this. And I've explained this before in another video that I did all about topping from the bottom where I talk about the origin of the phrase, why people use it, what it was originally intended for versus how people use it today, and just generally why I'm not a really big fan of it. But even within that, I do want to acknowledge that there are situations where people do experience real true blue topping from the bottom and i want to talk about those scenarios where you do experience actual topping from the bottom if you think that's happening to you what do you do about it how do you talk about it and before we do that i do want to discuss some key things to know about topping from the bottom because if you don't already know what that phrase means it's probably a good idea to go over the basics. So to understand what topping from the bottom is, I think first of all, we do need to look at, okay, what's topping and what's bottoming? What kind of assumptions do we take into scenes and relationships as a community? Because in the King community, we do generally divide things into one of two broad approaches. We have people that are on one side that are D types, dominance, or tops. They are the ones that are performing the actions during a scene and or they are the ones who have power, authority, and control during a scene. Then you have people that are S types or submissives or bottoms. They are the ones that are receiving actions during a scene and or the ones who are giving up power, authority, and control during a scene. You do also have people that are switches that either go between those roles during a scene, between different partners, or between different scenes with the same partner. There's lots of other ways to be a switch. Another video about that will be linked down below if you wanna know more about switching. But the point is, is that with these roles, we do generally have an understanding of how an S-type acts or how a dominant acts during a scene, for example. And because of that, if somebody acts outside of those assumed roles, that can cause hurt feelings, tension, somebody becoming upset at the end of a scene. And so I think it's worth evaluating what those assumptions are. And because we're talking about topping from the bottom here, I'll talk about what our expectations are for a bottom or an S-type. Like a bottom is generally expected to not bite, scratch at, or try to punch their partner during a scene. They're expected to not hurl insults or slurs and you know just call their partner every bad name in the book they're expected to not be overly critical and constantly correcting their partner they're overall expected to more than anything just sit back and enjoy their ride right they're there to enjoy what's happening to them them being overly critical and analytical especially during the scene itself is usually seen as a detriment to that they might even be labeled as being naggy or too picky as well and i think in isolation all of us could probably agree that these baselines are fairly reasonable. Like I know for myself, if I was topping, I would not appreciate it if one of my partners out of nowhere decided to bite me randomly while I was trying to lovingly put a blindfold across their head. Like, no, that's not appropriate, no thank you. But when you evaluate and look at this in the context of there being so many different ways to approach kink, then it becomes a little bit trickier, right? Like. If you know that your partner is a masochist and they pain process by swearing like a sailor, it maybe isn't going to affect you as a negative thing if your partner is calling you every bad name in the book and saying F you. Now some people still wouldn't enjoy that, but it might be more understandable if you know it's going to happen and it's not actually because they hate you or don't like you. That's just how they process pain. Or even things like biting, scratching, trying to punch a partner. Yeah, 
think most of the time that's probably going to be unwelcome, but during a mutual rough body play scene or a wrestling scene or a takedown and capture scene, that might actually be warranted by the style of scene that you're doing. Even things like somebody being naggy and too bossy during a scene, especially if you are a newer dominant or top with a more experienced bottom or submissive, that kind of feedback might actually be wanted. You might ask for that level of feedback before you even actually do a scene together. And then when you get it, you're happy about it because you want to make sure that you're doing the best job you possibly can with your still developing skill set. So as we can tell, these things are complicated. We can't necessarily make universal statements about all subs, all bottoms have to act like this. All doms and tops have to act like this every single time for forever. And if they ever deviate from that in any way for any reason, they are topping from the bottom or bottoming from the top, I guess. So we don't really talk about that. And I think that's telling for a lot of the motivations behind using the phrase topping from the bottom because topping from the bottom originally was meant as a phrase to be used when somebody was acting outside of the role as a bottom when they were doing those things that I mentioned like trying to fight their partner being a nag being overly critical swearing putting their partner down doing things that generally don't make a dom or top feel good during a scene doing those things outside of it being negotiated for and consented to and just running over their partners. I think that use of topping from the bottom is much more valid. However, in current day, you do meet a lot of people that will use topping from the bottom essentially to shame subs and bottoms into being silent because to them, anything that is not passive acceptance and quiet obedience is seen as topping from the bottom. They just are afraid seemingly of bottoms and of submissives that will advocate for themselves and they don't like it if somebody speaks up. They would react to somebody saying, you know, sir, my knees hurt, can I please stand? With like just outrage or they would be like how dare you disobey me slave like they would just be so upset about it anytime somebody brings up that they don't like a toy something is too painful they're uncomfortable whatever it is oh well that's topping from the bottom you're trying to control me you don't really want to be a submissive i mean oh my gosh you keep doing this do you really want to get a reputation as one of those bottoms i mean no one's gonna want to play with you if they know how you act during a scene like this the disrespect oh my gosh like people get very very upset about it and frankly to those people you gotta get together my dude like come on now whether whatever kind of top you are whatever kind of dumb you are if somebody making a reasonable request for their own comfort is that level of offensive to you, if you don't want to hear any feedback ever from a partner about anything, I do, do you really want to be a dom or a top or like what's going on there mentally for you? I feel like maybe you've made some mistakes along the way and you're understanding what it takes to be a dom or a top because being a dom or a top does not mean that you are an unquestioned authority that will not be taking any feedback at this time thank you like feedback debriefing all of that i think should be part of basically every kink relationship at least at the start if you build up over time into a more deep relationship where you are giving up more power and control because you have that basis of trust from earlier experiences great but right off the bat your first time ever doing a scene you're really thinking a partner's not going to give you any feedback at all ever i think you got some wires crossed there okay so the reason i say all of this is because before we move into talking about how to deal with topping from the bottom, I think it's really important for doms and tops to have a moment of introspection about their partner's behavior. Is it topping from the bottom or are you calling it that because you've heard other people label that behavior that way? Is it something about you or maybe your partner is giving you reasonable feedback about what's pleasurable for them or not, what they're able to take or not. And for some reason, you mentally are not in a place to be able to receive that information as anything other than bossiness and unnecessary criticism. I know a lot of people don't want to talk about this, 
But doms and tops can also have self-esteem issues, mental health issues, they can feel insecure or ashamed of their dominance or of being a top. And so naturally, yeah, you could be a dom or a top and not be in a good place to hear it if your partner is like, hey, uh, sir, could you please, let's a little too high, can you maybe move it down like an inch or two when you hit me with the paddle? Thank you so much. Like some people that would just be like, oh my God, I'm hitting them wrong with the paddle, they don't like it, oh, and they just, the panic that would set in would be very, very hard to deal with. So take a moment, assess yourself, evaluate rationally, without judgment, what your partner's behavior is, what your reaction to it is, and then assess from there, is it something going on with me? Are they making a reasonable request or behaving in an appropriate way? Or do we actually need to evaluate this on a deeper level and have a conversation about topping from the bottom? Because it's not uncommon for a lot of doms and tops to be locked in that caretaker role where they just give and give and give and they never really take a second to stop and evaluate themselves and take care of themselves and heal that emotional baggage they may be dealing with because it's easier or more comfortable or more immediate in their brains to deal with other people's problems first. So have that introspection and then from there, moving on to recognizing topping from the bottom. What are some signs that your partner is topping from the bottom? What does it actually look like according to yours truly? I think number one is look for people that are completely self-centered in their approach to kink. When they negotiate, when they talk about what they wanna do, it's all me, 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 me all the time. What they like, what they're into, what they wanna do, their ideas, and they never stop to check in with you about your preferences, your ideas, your limits, your boundaries, any of that stuff. And if you were to, for example, end a scene early because you're not feeling it or something went wrong on your end emotionally, you don't wanna keep going, if that happens, they might act angry about it. They might go, well, but you're the dom, you're the top, I can't keep going, you're being a baby, you're being silly, you're being selfish, why won't you give this thing to me that I need, that I want? Instead of pausing to check in and be like, oh my gosh, what's happening for you? What's going on, are you okay? Yeah, that's really self-centered and really self-focused and that's generally not okay to do. And especially after a scene is done. If they never check in on you, if they never ask how things went for you, what you liked, if they don't ever mutually debrief with you, that's also like somebody that maybe doesn't really care about what your experience is. Basically anytime somebody is making you feel like a kinky gumball machine and they don't really seem to care about you and your experience, that's a red flag for potential topping from the bottom. I think number two would be People that just ignore what you have to say. People that are in scenes with you where maybe you've negotiated to where you're supposed to be able to tell them things, give them orders, and then they ignore whatever you're saying, right? They go, oh, one ear goes in, goes out the other ear, not paying attention to that, don't care about what you have to say, don't care what you want. Even reasonable requests that maybe anybody would give during a scene like, you know, can you put your phone away? They ignore that. They're not really into anything that you have to say. They're gonna do exactly what they want, when they want, regardless of what your opinion is about the matter. They just don't wanna to listen to directions, even if it's within negotiated limits. And if they do listen, it's not without some serious arguing first. They always wanna rules lawyer you. They always wanna debate about how X, Y, Z thing you want them to do is stupid, silly, unnecessary. Why can't you do it? This is too hard, blah, blah, blah. Like even if you said beforehand, we're gonna do this during a scene, during the scene in the moment, they fight you about it. Also a sign of potential topping from the bottom there. And next up is they disrespect your time. This is a big one I think a lot of people ignore because you know, not everyone is good at time management, but it can cross over into a threshold where, okay, we've gotten to the other side of this. This is no longer just like, I'm having issues with remembering like how long it takes me to go to the dungeon. Now we're just disrespecting somebody and not really being aware enough of how much time and effort they're putting into making this scene happen. Like if somebody is always late to meet up with you at a dungeon, they never come over to your house on time, or if you're not even doing a scene together but checking in, you know, 
if they never return your messages, never answer your calls, never return your check-in text messages after a scene is done, they just don't really care about your time. They're never timely with you and, you know, they kind of just act flippant about it. Like, oh, what's the big deal? Why do you care? I'm here, aren't I? Yeah, big red flag there too. Now, moving on here, we're getting into some of the more serious, bigger red flag behavior. I think number one here is somebody who tries to verbally insult you during a scene. This is not being bratty. We'll talk about that more later. This is not playfulness. This is not any kind of negotiated, oh, this is like my pain processing thing. This is somebody who says things during a scene intentionally to hurt you and make you feel bad. Things like, oh my God, my other Dom was so much better at this than you. I mean, what's your problem? Or they hurl insults at you while you're playing. They just generally try to say stuff to make you feel bad about yourself and to put you down and to make you feel lesser. They might say things like, oh my God, are you freaking stupid? Do you not even know how to hold a paddle correctly? Ugh, here, let me do it. Like they try to make you feel insecure. They guilt you. They make you feel ashamed because they think that will somehow give them the upper hand in the scene as though that's a thing that needs to happen during scene interactions. And then also you have people that even take this <sighs> insulting, in a different direction, where it's not necessarily just about calling you stupid and bad, they're overly critical. They try to just nitpick at every single little thing that you do. And this is not like reasonable feedback about like, hey, you know, don't hit me too close to my kneecaps. Can you move up a couple inches? This is like, you know, you gotta move it three degrees to the left. No, it's too hard, it's too soft. Like no matter what you do to change what you're doing, they're still not happy with it. Like. They get frustrated, they roll their eyes, they sigh, they like basically act like they don't want to be there because they're so disappointed in what you're doing for some reason. Like you try to do exactly what they say and then you do it and they're still not happy. Like, oh no, no, you know, higher, no, 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 lower, no, to the left, to the right. Oh my God, this is so ridiculous. Why can't you just get this? Like they act incredulous at the fact that you are not following every single one of their impossible directions to the letter or not even during a scene, but also during aftercare, during debriefing. Whenever you ask them how the scene went for them, they have a laundry list of your personal sins. They somehow both want you to keep going and they act upset when you end the scene, but they also hate everything you do during the scene and are like aghast that you think that you're trying your best and can't possibly be doing anything differently. Now, the last one here is fairly extreme. And I'd like to believe that most people would know not to do this, but I unfortunately know that this does happen. And this would be people that literally try to physically fight you during the scene. I know that sounds ridiculous, but it does happen. People that try to shove you, push you, bite you, like, you know, scratch at you, claw you, spit at you. They just generally take the toy out of your hand. Like they are trying to physically overtake you during the scene or like get payback for you as the top or dom inflicting certain activities on them. Like they have basically an uncontrolled physical response to what you're doing during the scene and or they want to physically overpower you and take control and steal the toy from you and hit you with it in a way that is totally non-negotiated for. It's not a switching scene. They just somehow feel like that's appropriate behavior when it's absolutely not. Now I do wanna add for this list that something that I found that was really interesting online when I was researching this is most of the lists out there that talk about like how to tell your partner is topping from the bottom. A lot of them are very DS focused and I feel like there is a difference between people behaving inappropriately in a DS scene versus in like a scene by scene top bottom relationship. Like I feel like they might even need two separate terms. Just kind of like besides the point because there was something I saw in almost every single one of these lists that I was like, I don't know if I agree with that. And that was essentially saying that you're topping from the bottom if you say no, or if you say no, especially to physical intimacy. And maybe this is just me, 
but I have a problem with that. So they would say things like, for example, the dominant can touch the submissive anywhere, anytime, in any place. It is their right to do this for as long as the relationship lasts. Or typically in a DS relationship, you have given over control of your body to your dominant. This means that if they wish to touch you, that is their right. Removing yourself from a situation is topping from the bottom. Learn to accept the attention, no matter what it is. And just, are we really sending people the message that they need to be okay with their dominant without having to say anything about it first? Touching them anytime, anywhere, any way they like. And if you ever say that you don't like that or don't want to do that or are uncomfortable with it, that's topping from the bottom. Like. Yes, there are DS relationships where you negotiate for it, you work up to it over time, whatever it is, where you do give up that type of control to your dominant partner. They do have the authority to do that, but not inherently because they're your dom. Like this reads like it was written by one of those internet doms. It's like, well, you know, sweet cheeks, if you're gonna be my submissive, that means you have to let me have access to your full total body all the time, anywhere I want to. Yes, even on the bus when you're going to school. I mean, why wouldn't that be included? Like, I just... That's not, like, I can't get behind that. Like, yes, some people do have, like, CNC relationships, like, consensual, non-consent relationships. You know, people have free use dynamics. Like, there are lots of ways to consensually, in an informed way, have this approach to control over your body or not in a DS relationship. But to my mind, there is nothing inherent in having a DS relationship. Any category that is involved in a potential DS relationship is something you intentionally opt into consciously when you're developing the relationship. It should never be assumed without some kind of conversation beforehand that anything is gonna be involved with being a D or an S in a relationship, okay? Like just like if you want to negotiate for it, if it is negotiated for, you do have opportunities to renegotiate if you discover it's not your thing, you don't wanna do it, you don't like it, it's destructive to your relationship, you should be able to renegotiate, but just, just yikes, I guess. Just like, mm, I don't like that, it's not comfy for me. Mm, can't say I agree with that perspective, sorry. Like just, I'm afraid of the social permission this would potentially give already crappy doms to be like, Oh, see, look at this article. You're topping from the bottom because you say no to me when you tell me you don't want to do whatever with my genitals. Like, see, you're being a bad sub. Listen to these authorities on the internet. You have to do this because look at what they have to say. Like, the idea of that being used in that way to me is just horrifying. And there's one other aspect of this that I want to address when it comes to telling the difference between your partner topping from the bottom or not. And that would be the line between topping from the bottom and bratting. Because it is possible that somebody who is new to bratting could go too far and veer into topping from the bottom territory without realizing that's what they're doing or without that actually being their intention. There's also people who will cover up their toxic negative topping from the bottom behavior by calling it bratting and then acting incredulous when you have a problem with it because they're just bratting. I thought you wanted to play with a brat. Neither one of those is okay, but I think the latter one does have more problematic elements to it. And I think if you are trying to discern whether or not your partner is topping from the bottom or bratting, there is one key thing to evaluate, and that is their motivation and goal for doing what they're doing. With a brat, generally, they're trying to have fun. They're expressing who they are as a submissive or as a bottom, and they try to do that within certain contained boundaries and limitations. They don't actually want to win. They don't actually want to take control during the scene. They want to be able to push up against certain boundaries and have their partner respond enough to be able to put them back into place. They have a fantasy where they get to usually test a partner and poke at them and go, will you be able to take control? Will you be able to put me in my place? But they ultimately do want to be able to be put in their place. Whereas with somebody who is topping from the bottom, it's not really play for them. They're not doing it to have fun. They're not doing it to express who they are as a submissive or as a bottom. They are doing it because they actually want to take power and control from you 
in the relationship or during the scene. They want to be able to break you mentally or overwhelm you physically and actually from your hands, take back control of the scene. They want to be able to dominate you mentally and physically without actually having to say that they want to be the dominant in the scene or in the dynamic. They don't really care about what it is to you. They don't really care about how their behavior affects you mentally as a dom or the top. They just want to be able to fight you for power and then win for some reason. That's just what they get out of doing a scene, apparently. And frankly, a lot of the behavior that people who top from the bottom do it reminds me a little bit of like negging and pickup artistry and like something that like an Andrew Tate acolyte would do like in terms of like oh we're gonna like tell this person that they're pretty and awesome and that you want to play with them and then when you get to actually doing the thing you're gonna tear them down and make them feel really bad about themselves and then that'll get them to do what you want them to do because you've torn them down so much that they're desperate for your attention and approval. So they're going to do anything. They're going to, you know, crawl through glass to make you happy to, because they just care about you so much because you've made them care about you because you, well, all these like mentally toxic bad things to do to somebody. Like I, I genuinely think there's like a weird amount of overlap between negging pickup artistry, Andrew Tate behavior, and like topping from the bottom, at least in the worst possible versions of some of those things. So, be aware, talking from the bottom, not good behavior, it's destructive to a relationship, and it's important to be aware of it if either you're doing it or if somebody is doing it to you. So, what do you do if you've gone through this list and heard me talk about this and you're pretty sure your partner is topping from the bottom, either on accident or on purpose? What do you do? And this might surprise you, but you gotta talk to them. You gotta have a conversation. And I'm not saying this to like, be condescending and be like, well, you just gotta talk to your partner to solve your problems. I say this because I think a lot of doms and tops do not feel empowered to talk to their partners about things going wrong because, well, they're the top, they're the dom, they have the power. If they don't like something, they should just make it change. You know, they shouldn't complain because they have all the control, they have all the authority. And I don't think that is something that a lot of people have really wrestled with in terms of messaging in the community. Like, yes, as a dom, as a top, when you're negotiating, when you're doing feedback, whatever, that is supposed to go both ways. And it is okay to tell your partner that you don't like something, you don't want to do it, it's not your kink, you're setting a boundary around it. All of that should totally be okay. And it's sad that it's not because a lot of people think that they will like lose their dom card, lose their top card, if they come out and say directly that they don't wanna do something, it's not their kink, that's too extreme for them or whatever it is. It's okay to set boundaries and talk about things that you don't like about your partner's behavior as a top, as a dom, without having to do it within like a punishment framework or something like that. You can just talk to them directly, I promise it will be fine. But how do you actually have that conversation? What do you say? And I think if you wanna have this conversation, you need to set yourself up for success here because this can be a very difficult conversation. I think having an approach that is generally very heartfelt, vulnerable, compassionate, and gentle is going to be the best approach. Don't leap in, guns blazing, making accusations, getting angry, you know, yelling and screaming and like escalating the scenario. You want to stay calm, you want to stay even tempered. And the best way to do that is to not have this conversation at a time when there is already high stress, right? That could be work stuff, life stuff, relationship stuff outside of your dynamic. It could also be scene space stuff, right? Like don't do this during a scene. Don't do it right after a scene or during aftercare. Wait until all of that scene energy has kind of gone away. And then maybe a couple days to a couple weeks later after you've gone through a drop that's gonna happen for you, you started to come back up from it, then have that conversation. Make sure you are both in a good place to be ready to talk about some stuff that can be heavy and painful. And then when you do talk about it, I would be clear and concise about what your feelings are, center yourself and your feelings, but also have compassion and room for your partner's perspective as well. So I would maybe say something like, hey, so-and-so, you know, 
I have to admit, after our last scene, I wasn't feeling super great. Actually, I left the scene feeling pretty upset and disrespected, and I've been thinking about it a lot, and I'm hoping we can have a conversation about what happened, like what's been going on for you, anything you need me to know about that's been going on in your life, and give them some space to talk about maybe what's been going on with them, give them an opportunity to recognize what you're trying to communicate without making any big outlandish reactions or excuses. Like pay very close attention to how they react to this opening statement because if their reaction is one super aggressive, very angry, very entitled, like, oh my God, how could you have a problem with anything? You're the dom, you're the top. What do you mean you're angry and upset? You're the top, you're in control. What could possibly be wrong for you? Like if they are mystified by you possibly having a negative reaction to what happened, do you really want to keep playing with a person that has that explosive of a reaction to your bid for an intimate, vulnerable conversation about your feelings? I would probably say no to that. But also, too, there's a second reaction that I think is also possibly even more disturbing than outright anger. And that would be somebody that they hear that and without paying attention to your feelings, they go, oh my gosh, I'm the worst. I'm a horrible human being. You probably hate me. I don't even deserve to be a submissive. I, I can't even believe I would do anything like that. I'm so sorry. I'm the worst ever. I totally understand if you hate me forever. I never want to see me again. And they just like melt into a puddle and like completely decenter the conversation off of you and onto themselves and you needing to pity them and comfort them and center their feelings and go, no, 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 they expect you to react like, oh, no, no, you're fine, you're okay, everything's fine. Like they want you to reassure them as a distraction from that conversation you want to have about your feelings. And a lot of people do this, both reactions, without meaning to. I'm not saying either one of these reactions are always intentional. A lot of people just learn these behaviors growing up for whatever reason that works for them and they are not necessarily trying to be malicious but they're not healthy communicators and it's going to be really hard to work through anything if their reaction any slight potential criticism or feedback is to melt down or explode okay ideally a healthier reaction would look much more like Oh, God, gee, I, I have been really focused on my own emotions lately. And, you know, I was in my feelings after the scene too. And I'm so sorry I didn't check in with you. What's been going on with you? Let me, let me know about it. And even if it's uncomfortable for them, even if it's hard to hear, they should be able to make some kind of room for having this hard conversation if they care about you if they want to preserve the relationship because they understand that a relationship takes two people making efforts to have healthy communication to be able to work through these more difficult things. And then if you want a guide to be able to know how to communicate after this point, I would probably say that what you need to do is you need to do like kind of, I would say like five or six things. I would say you need to be direct about the facts of what happened without any judgment when you're talking about your feelings, center yourself, make I statements. Don't make it about how they must feel. Don't project their supposed feelings onto them because you don't really know what they are. I would say three, you need to be very clear about what your needs are, be direct about them because of what you've experienced. Don't be afraid to set boundaries. You also need to give positive reinforcement while you're speaking. Give your partner care while you're giving them a stick, okay? help them stay engaged positively in the conversation. You also need to make sure, this is really, really hard, this is like my weakness during conversations. Do not get sidetracked into tangents and what ifs and what about this. Stay focused on whatever the concrete point is you're trying to make while also recognizing that other things could also need to be talked about at a different time. There is room, there is time for every potential conversation somebody wants to have. And then finally, appear confident, okay? Be direct, be confident, send to yourself. Don't beg, don't plead, don't be like, well, I mean, but if it's okay with you, da, da, da. act confident, act strong. That will get you respect, that will get you listened to. But you don't have to be rude about it. You can both be direct and confident 
while also being compassionate and leaving room for your partner's emotions. Now, I will say this before you actually have even that step into the conversation, you get to that point. Be aware of the fact that even just opening up this conversation at all could give your partner an opportunity to admit to themselves and to you that they recognize that their behavior isn't super great. It could very well be the case that they are trying to be a brat and they're like, yeah, you know, I'm sorry. I know I missed the mark. I, I really want to get to be a brat with you. I think it's a really fun dynamic. I know I overshot it and I missed the mark and I'm sorry. Like they could recognize immediately what's wrong and cop to it. And that makes this so much easier. Also, I think especially if you are a male dom or top with a female bottom or submissive, there's a very real possibility that bringing up this conversation could crack some glass on their identity as a bottom or as a submissive because I gotta be honest here, if you're getting into the kink scene, especially the het kink scene, the default assumption is that if you are a female of any kind, you are going to be a bottom or a submissive or at the very least a bottom leaning switch. And female dominance is not recognized or talked about. So a newer partner who's like, I'm kinky and I'm a woman, therefore I must be submissive. Like they could just be like chafing at wanting to be a dom or a top, but feeling like they have to like play act of being submissive. And they might just be like, you know what? I actually have really been thinking that I'm not a submissive, but like, I don't know what my other options are. And like, am I a dom? I don't think I am because whatever reason. And like, they could just be trying their absolute best to be a submissive, to get to engage in kink, but it's not their thing. And you are kind of dealing with the backlash of somebody coming to terms with their dominant identity and they just have not known how to approach that in a healthy way. Which is not to minimize your experience and your pain in your heart, but just recognize that it is possible for somebody to not behave this way maliciously and do it because there's some friction going on in themselves and they're struggling. They are struggling to figure out what they do actually want and how to get those needs met. So you could have a pretty easy solution here, but putting all the stuff together of how to have this conversation, you know, let's create a scenario here. You might say something like, you know, I'm, I'm glad we can have this conversation. You know, I gotta be honest. What happened for me is that last week when we had a scene, you know, we were gonna start at six. You didn't show up until seven. I felt really bad about the fact that I don't think that my feelings and my time were being respected there. And then when we got into actually doing the scene, I asked you to put your phone away and you refused to. And then when we actually were getting into the play and I was spanking you, I was having a great time, but then I noticed you kept rolling your eyes and that just made me really confused. And so with all of that, I was feeling really hurt and afraid. Like I didn't know how you were gonna react. Like were you actually enjoying the scene or not? And I felt really insecure about whether or not you actually wanted to be with me. And if you were being honest about whether or not you liked what we were doing. And so in the future, if we're planning a scene together, I need you to be on time. And I know that being on time can be hard and there's traffic and work stuff. And so please just text me or send me a message if you're gonna be late, I promise I'll understand. I just wanna know so I can plan what I need to do for myself. And then with the phone, I'm gonna need us to put our phones away before we start doing the scene. We can keep them in my toy bag. We can get a locker for them. We can have a way to keep them secure if you're worried about that. If you need to wrap up a message before we start playing, I'd prefer to know that ahead of time so that we can have that finish and then get into the scene itself. If you need to check in in the middle of a scene if we're playing for a long time, totally get it. We can build in a time during the scene to take a break if you need that to make sure, you know, check in on things that need to be checked in on. Totally understand that. And I think if we can get that all sorted out, will be peachy keen, will be perfect. I'd love to get to play with you some more and get to see how this works for us. And with that, you know, what do you think we should do? You have any thoughts about this? Like invite them into the conversation, give them opportunities to problem solve with you about their behavior, what works for them, whether it's being late or being respectful verbally or whatever it is, give them an opportunity to admit that they see what they did wrong or what hurts you and then how they plan to correct that. And Again, you know, don't be afraid to set boundaries. Don't be afraid to say, I need this. If 
you bite me again during a scene, I will say red, I will end the scene. Or if you call me, you know, expletive here, I'm not going to be able to play with you again. Like set very firm boundaries. This is not you trying to be manipulative. This is you trying to protect yourself. And that's your responsibility. That's your number one job is to protect yourself. So don't feel guilty about doing that. And if you get into a conversation, they start throwing out accusations and what ifs and what about that and complaining, you can kindly and gently tell them, I hear you, I understand that you have your own things going on, your own issues, I absolutely want to recognize that. I also wanna have the proper time and space to be able to discuss that in the detail it deserves. For right now though, I think we need to focus on this so that way we have time and space later to talk about other things. Like just repeat that, be a broken record with all of this, one key thing to know, if somebody is trying to sidetrack you and what if you, or doubt you or correct you, be a broken record. Repeat what you know, repeat what you believe to be true, okay? If you don't wanna get sidetracked into this, just go, okay, great, I hear you, we'll talk about that later. It is okay to be repetitive to get a point across and eventually they are gonna tire themselves out trying to sidetrack you. And they're either gonna listen to you or walk away from the conversation and that's on them. So. Be direct, be clear, be kind, set boundaries, and be comfortable doing that. Now, you don't necessarily have to go as extreme, like if you ever do this ever again, I will never play with you ever again. That might be where you're at, in which case honor that. But if you're willing to deal with some things more incrementally, you can set up a guide for that. You can go, okay, you know, I understand that for you, biting is the way that you process pain, I am not willing to be your human mouth guard. So we're gonna get you a stuffy, we're gonna get you a pillow, let's practice biting that during the scene instead of trying to bite my bicep. Okay, let's go with that. And just like track that progress, see how they're doing, and if they are not making progress on what you need them to do to feel safe and comfortable during a scene, you have to address that, you have to be firm, and if they cannot respect you, if they cannot, despite their best efforts, do anything differently, you gotta walk away. You gotta say, okay, this is not worth it for me anymore. Like, you can go around and around and around trying to change one person's behavior, and you can make yourself silly trying to do that. Because if they don't want to change, if they can't change, you're just gonna be running into a wall there. They have to be the one that's willing to put in the work and to remember to like not bite you or not call you names during a scene. You can be direct, you can set up your boundaries, but at some point it is going to be on them. So it can be incremental, it doesn't have to be like an overnight switch and like you have to do this all right now. But also with this too, make sure you both understand what your limits and boundaries are too, because it could just very well be the case that you have a new submissive, new partner, new bottom, who just like doesn't understand the concept that boundaries and limits go for like all parties involved. And so talk about what those limits and boundaries are. It's always, I think, a good idea to be clear about like, okay, don't do this. I don't like this. I don't want this. And also be clear that they're not challenges. They're not something that you're saying because you want them to like, be like, oh, a target for me to exploit. This is not about trying to subvert your comfort level or to bother you with like poking at boundaries, understand and be very clear about like, hey, I'm saying this, do not do this. This is not a challenge. This is not a guidepost for you to bother me with. Just respect it and if you can't, I'm sorry, we're not gonna work out, we're not gonna be compatible. And if you can work through all that, I think a good partner will be able to hear your feedback and change their behavior. And with that being said, that's everything I have to say about Topic from the Bottom. I would be so curious to know your thoughts about this one here today. How do you deal with Topic from the Bottom? Have you ever topped from the bottom before yourself? What did you do to fix it? If anything, I would love to know your thoughts in a comment down below. If you did enjoy this and you have not already, please do subscribe because I make videos twice a week about all sorts of different kink and BDSM related topics. And finally, if you wanna support what I do, you can go over to my Patreon, link to that will be down below. That is what makes all of these videos possible. Thank you so, so much. If you do already support me over there, it means the absolute world to me. And until I see all next time. I hope you have a great rest of your day and a great rest of your week. Bye-bye.